it, that that album was that that album was tough. <laughs> that album was tough to do. Uh, now is probably my favorite song off of that. Uh, Wanna be is pretty good. It's just a it, that's that album kind of didn't get off to a good start from the beginning um, because we were so used to going into the studio or going, I'm sorry, into rehearsal with just the four of us and kind of hashing some stuff out before we would uh, present it to a producer or anyone for that matter. And um, <clears throat> it didn't go that way. We went from day one with the producer and it just, there's some lot of good things that came out of that record, no question. But um, um, yeah, it, that one was tough to make. Yeah, I was gonna ask. So the sound is is more aggressive. It's kind of a return to the earlier earlier albums like Dysfunction and Tormented. Was that return of aggression? Was that a conscious decision in advance that hey, we're gonna kind of do a throwback sound. We're gonna go in that direction, or was it a little bit of tension within the band that brought out kind of this this aggression in the music? Maybe a little bit of both, but um. I think for the most part, we wanted to return more to the roots. Um, we knew it was going to sound a little bit different um, just because of all the new technology and so on and so forth. But um, yeah, it, it was, there, there was a somewhat of a conscious uh, effort of going back to the roots a little bit. So we have, we have a question from a drummer. This is from Corey Wavanak. I'm definitely butchering most of these names. Uh, <laughs> he, he says, which Stained album did you feel the most creative with? And then he says, John is my biggest drumming influence. That's from Corey. Oh, cool. Thank you, Corey. Uh, 14 Shades of Grey, probably. It was, um, I like all the grooves on that. Um, yeah. I'd have to say 14 shades. Okay. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know, man. I, I, I think it was just a combination of what everyone else was playing. And, and I just, I don't know. I, I, that's my favorite. That's personally my favorite. I mean, everyone has a set of ears. So. And a, a similar question from Mike Lamond. Were there any stain songs that you really connected to personally? So I don't know if maybe the lyrics to one of them stood out to you. I'm not sure. Schizophrenic conversations. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, no, actually, maybe. Um, uh, yeah, probably. That's on 14 Shades, too. It's um, I can't think of the name of the song now. Sorry, my bad. I can't think of the name of the song. It's all good, but one of the songs on 14 Shades. 14 Shades, yeah. Okay, awesome. So this self-titled album, that's the band's final studio album, and it's your last album with the band. So it's been about a decade, and the band hasn't released any other studio albums since then. Um, mm. So as we as we transition outside of Stained into the other work that you've done, I just wanted to do a quick recap just to for you to understand uh, how crazy that career was. Uh, so taking the, <laughs> the whatever it is, 20,000 feet back uh, approach. So with Stained, you guys had three number one albums five albums that went gold, platinum, or multi-platinum, 15 million albums sold, 25 singles, six of, it, six of which were number one singles, 13 of which were top 10 singles. My question is, when first starting the band, you're going back to, I believe, 95, 96, could you ever have imagined that all those accolades would be attached to your name and your band name? No. No, no, I don't think anyone does. Um, I think that's what you want to achieve, but it doesn't always work out that way, especially in music, because it's, it's a really tough business. I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm saying it's just a tough business. Um, but to have all that attached, yeah, that's, uh, it's, it's amazing. I mean, I, I, like I said, I've had a chance to look back at it now since, since there's been so much time. Uh, since being with those guys and uh, finishing up that last record. But um, 
Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I mean, you're, you're, you're giving me some of this information right now that I just didn't know the numbers on certain things. Um, but that, that's pretty awesome. And once again, man, we, we could never do this stuff without with the support of fans and people like yourself, Joel. So um, we really do appreciate all that. Amazing. Final, final stain question is let's fast forward into the future. So it's, I don't know, 200 years, 500 years, a thousand years from now. Let's say most of today's music has disappeared from mm -hmm. human consciousness, but one stain song, just one stain song oh. could, could remain that people listen yeah. to what one stain song would you choose to represent the band? It doesn't have to be a single to you. One yeah. song lasts the, the uh, test of time into the future. Wow. One song. That's tough, man. I want people to still keep rocking. So I would have to say probably my show. Mud shovel, man, yeah. that's a good choice. Yeah, yeah, that captures the essence of the band, I believe. Pretty much, yeah, yeah. The the I aggression think... while still having the commercial appeal, it kind of gives everything, you know. Yeah, it's got it's got a little bit of everything. That's a that's a good choice.